Hi, my name is Josh Evilsizer. Today I'm going to show you the new ChatGPT, just the free and helpful stuff. Are you watching the right video? Well, if you're interested in harnessing all the newest, free, and actually useful capabilities of ChatGPT 4.0, then yes. Questions answered in this video. ChatGPT, what features of ChatGPT are now free to everyone? What are the newest and free features of ChatGPT? How are they actually helpful to everyday people? And we'll end with the most important question, why should you care? Let's jump right in. So here we are at ChatGPT, and I'm gonna answer the question, what features are free to everyone? And I'm gonna hit the top five. The first one is ChatGPT 4.0. You now have access to the latest model. Custom GPTs, custom instructions, memory, and access to Google Drive, OneDrive, and SharePoint. I'm gonna talk more about those last four and then jump into the ChatGPT 4.0 stuff at the end. All right, so custom GPTs, what are those? They are basically saved prompts and sometimes they can be a little bit fancier. There's probably many videos on custom GPTs. We're just gonna to touch on it lightly here. So over here on the left-hand side, if you don't see them showing up, if you click on the Explore GPTs button or option, they should show up. And then you can come over here and search for the GPT that's gonna serve you. And I'm gonna give you an example of one of them uh, such that you know perhaps how to search for them or how this might help you and how other GPTs might help you. Again, we're just gonna to touch on this lightly. So you can see here, what does this GPT, what does this GPT do? <sighs> the acronym's coming from OpenAI. Anyways, visualize anything, ideas, code, business flows, data, finances. So this obviously does flowcharts for us and other stuff. And it's, what it's doing here is giving us some helpful prompts. Hey, try, you know, do this, this is a thing that it can do, or do this, or do this. So we're just gonna click on one of these and see what it can do for us. Uh, ultimately, it's just giving us, you know, hey, get started with this. Okay, so it's asking us to allow it to do something outside of ChatGPT. We're just gonna go ahead and click yes. So I said custom GPTs are basically saved prompts and sometimes a little bit fancier. This is a good version of the sometimes fancier. Uh, this is gonna give us a really neat or a <laughs> flow chart. What is neat is the ability here, we can edit with Miro using drag and drop. So when I click on this, it's gonna take me outside of chat GPT and I can edit this flow chart that it's given me. Super handy, super helpful. This is how you could use the free version of chat GPT to do stuff that's actually useful and helpful um, and doesn't take a prompt engineer to complete. All right, so we're in the free version of chat GPT. This is a custom GPT because you have access to all the GPTs now for free. You just can't edit them. But I do want to show you how simple it can be to edit them and perhaps demystify this, any, any air of complexity around custom GPTs. So we're in my profile now, and you can see here it's 4.0 up here. Everything we're gonna do, except for what I'm about to show you, you can do in the free version of ChatGPT. I'm pivoting to 4.0 just so I don't run out of air time. Um, in the free version of ChatGPT, you are limited to a certain amount of queries. Um, and so we're just gonna use 4.0 so I don't run out of those while I'm making this video. All right, so I wanted to show you a custom GPT that I made that is, that is it's so simple it's embarrassing. Uh, but what it does is it, I'll kind of read this here for you. It turns stream of consciousness voice dictation into organized and coherent summaries or narratives on your mobile device. That's what's key. To begin, push the microphone on your device's keyboard, so on your phone, right? Um, after you've selected Word Salad, the GPT, the custom GPT, obviously, uh, the model will only reply with OK, so you can keep starting and stopping it, and it's just gonna, or, or sending the messages, and it's gonna keep saying OK to you until you tell it you're finished. So you're like, what? what's going on here? Have you ever had a meeting where afterwards you wanna capture all of your thoughts and ideas um, but you can't type them out quick enough, or you've had a phone conversation, or you're preparing for a phone conversation, or you're preparing for a meeting, or you're perhaps, you have ideas for a book. You've just got stuff in your head and you just need to get it all out, but then you want to organize for you. You don't have to go back and edit it. Because then why would you voice dictate, right? That it, when you voice dictate and have to go back and edit your voice dictation, like it removes any efficiency you gained when you have to go back and correct it. Well, this, this eliminates the lost efficiency 
um, from the correction period. Anyways, enough talking. I will show you how this could work in reality. So I'm not going to pick up my phone and talk into it. I'm going to give you a example of what me talking to my phone could have produced. And so here it is. And maybe I'll just leave myself uh, up here for the remainder of the video. The sun beats down, relentless, scorching, pavement, feet burning, needs shade. Where's that coffee shop around the corner? Wasn't it just here last week? Or was that a dream? Reality blurs these days time. A construct melting like Dolly's. So it's just a stream of consciousness stuff, right? It's not organized. There's no periods. There's no sentences. Um, and then when I hit the send button, chat GPT is going to be like, okay. And so I can send some more of that stuff. And send, so it's not like all oh, just building up on my phone, potentially going to be lost if I push the wrong button. So I can just keep talking, sending, talking, sending until I tell chat GPT. All done. Now, ChatGPT is going to come back and just turn it into organized information, and as you can see, it did here. Uh, this is called Word Salad. I'll link it in the video description down below. It's a, uh, they're all free, uh, I think. Custom GPT, if you want to use that. So that's just an example of custom GPTs. But what I wanted to show you here, when you click on it and you go to edit it, if you end up paying for the paid version of ChatGPT, these are so easy to create. So edit GPT. You can see the name is here, the description's here, and it's just a save prompt. And here it is. Your role is to turn my voice dictation into an organized and coherent summary, but only after I'm finished making entries. And then I give it some rules on how to do that, some instructions. Uh, down here, I don't have anything enabled. Conversation starters, you saw those earlier with the other diagram drawer. Knowledge, you can upload files for it to reference. Uh, give it the ability to web browse, access to DALI, or code interpreter. And finally, uh, create a new action down here, none of which I did, but it's still a useful and helpful custom GPT. Uh, and again, this functionality is only available if you pay for it, but I wanted to, again, demystify any complexities surrounding custom GPTs. Uh, they are not hard to make and they're easy to use. All right, so we've talked about custom GPTs, and uh, the next piece we want to talk about is custom instructions and memory. And I'm going to hit memory first. Uh, before I do that, I want to go back to the standard custom GPT screen here. All right, so if I type this, I enjoy thinking about productivity, and I hit enter, it's probably going to save it in its memory, and it did. Uh, memory updated. All right, so now I'm going to go down. No, we're good. So I click on my little face up here. There we go. All right, over here for now. <laughs> uh, we click on settings. Sorry, you can get it both ways, but this is the best way here. So customize chat GPT. Um, I'm lying to you again. It's under settings. <laughs> you can get that. You can get that. Uh, you can get there both ways. All right. So I'm just trying to find it. Maybe I just make my face small for now. Personalization. So here we have custom instructions and we have memory. So custom instructions. You'll see my custom instructions. My name is Josh. I live in Columbus, Ohio. I enjoy thinking about productivity. And you're like, okay, these custom instructions, well, well I mean, I, I, I hear what you're saying. I can read what you wrote. Well, what do they do? Custom instructions are explicit guidance that tells ChatGPT how to know and respond. It is the strongest effect between memory and custom instructions. It's going to, this will take precedence every time, basically. All right, so custom instructions. I'm not going to change anything here. And now we're going to look at memory. Before I do, what is memory? Well, memory is remembered across all conversations, um, and it's more contextually subtle than custom instructions. And here's kind of an example of what it saved to memory. Uh, for whatever reason, the one it just saved is not in here, but I could delete it if I wanted to. And it's remembered that my birthday is 1 January 2000. Um, and if you believe that, thank you. <laughs> all right, so let's get rid of this. So there you go. So you can manage it from here. And again, custom instructions are also created from here as well. As you saw, I don't use them a lot. Um, I, I'm always worried they're going to interfere with a prompt that I'm creating. Uh, so I just haven't found a great use for them. Um, but maybe from watching, seeing mine, you'll you come up with your own great ideas. All right, so custom instructions, memory, and the last piece is the connection to Google Drive and SharePoint and OneDrive. And I will demonstrate that uh, in one of the other demonstrations. So we're going to move on to explaining free custom, not custom, ChatGPT and ChatGPT 4.0. So what's, what's the big deal? What's the difference? 
I'm using the free version of ChatGPT, which has ChatGPT 4.0. What does that mean to me? Well, ChatGPT 4.0 is generally smarter and much more capable. Um, not only just ChatGPT, the, the free version you may have been previously using, which was terrible at this point. Um, it, pre, it used to be ChatGPT 3.5. Then there was ChatGPT 4, and then Turbo, and then 4.0. And so 4.0 is now the free version, which is awesome. You do have a limited amount of entries, though, as I talked about before, which is why I pivoted to my, my paid account. Um, but in any event, it's much better. So more capable. I'll give you a quick demo, uh, a little bit meta. Um, so here it is. I'm creating a video highlight, highlighting the capabilities of ChatGPT 4.0, now available to free users of ChatGPT. Create a table highlighting what was previously not, but is now available to free users of ChatGPT. Use a red and green check and X emoji system to identify where capabilities that previously didn't exist for users now do exist for free users. Be comprehensive and be sure to include key capabilities like access to custom GPTs, access to GPT 4.0, etc. And we'll hit the launch button. It's going to create a neat table um, using some emojis. And I could, man, that was quick. <laughs> uh, no, not quite done. And then I can download this table to a spreadsheet. Maybe you'll understand Sheet. I may should have used Spreadsheet perhaps, but I can download this to a spreadsheet, drop it in Google Sheets, do whatever I want with it. Uh, but as you can see, yep, there it is. A much more capable uh, and helpful chat GPT. All right, so just a, that was just a kind of a quick demonstration. Uh, what else is available with chat GPT 4.0? So there's a voice interaction module that is has been released and there's a newer one being released. The one that currently is released doesn't work great because it will kind of cut you off and it, it starts analyzing before you're done talking. So it's just not great. Um, I, wanna, I want to make distinct that that is different from actually use, just using the microphone on your device because we're gonna use that in a minute. Uh, but the voice interaction uh, right now is a little wonky because it, it hears your voice, it turns it into text and sends the text to ChatGPT, which the chat with ChatGPT then analyzes and responds back in text, which is translated to voice, which then comes out of your device. So you can see there's a there's a delay, it's doing a lot of stuff. When OpenAI ever finally releases their voice interaction that they demoed a couple months ago, it's gonna be a seamless interaction and it'll be very different in any event. So there's voice interaction and then multimodal inputs. That's where we make the money with ChatGPT 4.0 and actually being a useful and helpful everyday tool or a useful, helpful tool for the everyday person like you and me. So let's dive into those because that's what I'm most excited about. To show how these features are actually helpful to everyday folks like you and me. The key for this stuff to work though, um, for this to be helpful to us as everyday people, for it to be helpful to us in everyday situations is we need to turn the use of ChatGPT, and let me kind of get this off the screen, it's a little distracting. It needs to become a trained reflex, a default option or a choiceless choice where we just go, oh, instead of just Google it, it's, and I'm gonna use a phrase that Ethan Mollick uses in his book. Um, he, he provides four co-intelligence rules. So when we're using ChatGPT and other AI models, these are helping us, they are our co-intelligence. And the first rule is always invite, and that's the letter starts with the letter A and the letter I. Um, so always invite AI. So it's like AI twice. So always invite AI. And then the last piece is to the table. But if you can just remember, always invite or AI twice, uh, there you go. And that's, that's the goal is to change our defaults to thinking to use an AI model when there's something that it could be that there's something that could be done for us. And here come the examples. All right, so I talked about the voice transmogrification and how that's not great, but when, it, when it's released, it will be great. Let's jump into transcription tasks. So taking tedious things that might take us a lot of time to do on our own, now because of multimodal capabilities of ChatGPT 4.0 can do it for us. So its ability to upload, our ability to upload files, its ability to recognize those files, so as you saw with Word Salad, I was able to talk to it on my phone and then it spat out some organized text. So that's an example of transcription tasks. Another example is this one that I also borrowed from Ethan Mollick on LinkedIn. 
Uh, so credit where, credit where credit is due. I'm going to go ahead and let's see. So let's jump to the visuals so you can see what I'm talking about. So we've got this table of data. It's a picture of a table of data, or it's a PDF. It could be any. It could be either or. And I could ask somebody or I could copy all this stuff and put it in a spreadsheet or I could just send it to ChatGPT and have it do it for me and of course that's what we're going to do next so I told you I would demo the linkage to Google Drive so here it is this happens all the time just hit the refresh button and it'll fix it I don't know why it happens all the time but it happens all the time and so I'm going to go ahead to the folder where this image is saved and so the film sales and camera sales data table, so there it is. And we're, we're gonna, we wanna transcribe this information. Please transcribe the data in this film sales table of data. And so we send it, and it's probably gonna create a table here in chat GPT. Um, but what would be more helpful, of course, is, is if it's in a spreadsheet. So, so I'll just kind of prep that. And what's great is it's just taking data and putting in a different formula and it's using probably using code in the background so it's not going to hallucinate and it's not going to get anything wrong as we're all aware um, these models hallucinate and so if we can have them doing tasks for us that doesn't matter not doesn't matter where it's where it's less likely for it to hallucinate then of course the models become a lot more helpful um, because there's we're not worried about errors right so here's this table of data thank you very much and so i'm going to ask it now to you done talking, provide a spreadsheet. Again, these multimodal capabilities of ChatGPT have just changed the game as it relates to uh, helpfulness. Film sales and camera sales, there we go, spreadsheet. And there it is, and I could open it up if I wanted to. Um, I'm not gonna do that right now. The last thing we're gonna do is have it graph the data for us. Um, also, super helpful, I don't need to, no manipulation by me, just, Here's a picture of something. So I go from a picture of something to all of it in a spreadsheet, and now I've got meaningful charts and graphs. Pretty cool. All right, so that's just one example. Think about how you could use this um, for things that you do, and we'll move on to the next example. So I call it the thing, ex those, are, those are all transcription tasks. The next one is what I call the thing explainer. Uh, so here we are looking at a thing. And uh, I was, so I was at One Line Coffee in Franklinton, Ohio, and I was like, what the heck is that? Um, I, I got an idea what it does, but what the heck is that? And so I snapped the photo on my phone and just shared it with ChatGPT. Now, I'm sharing, we're doing this on my computer, so I can't do all that, but I'm trying to give you the idea of how simple it can be, how seamless your interactions with ChatGPT can be. So snap a photo, send to ChatGPT, and so we're gonna send it to ChatGPT here, uh, I'm going to upload this from my computer this time instead of using Google Drive. And we were looking at the please explain the coffee thing. All right, so check this out. I'm not even going to I'm not even going to use a prompt. I'm just going to send it. Got to get myself out of the way. If using the models, yep, tells me exactly what it is. And prompting has been a, a impediment to you. Like I didn't even prompt it. It just here's a picture, and it's like, yeah, I need, I know, I know exactly what you need. You're, you're curious what this thing is. Uh, here, here's what it is. Here's how it works. Um, all, all this goodness. So, uh, some of my discussion here was going to be about one-word prompts, and this is the the zero prompt answer. Um, super helpful. Okay, the next thing explainer we're going to do here. Have you ever received a medical lab report back from the doc? Now this is. This is not real. Uh, I took the format uh, of one of my reports from the VA, but none of this is real data. And so I've got this fake medical report, but you get these and you're like, well, this is neat. Um, and your eyes kind of roll back into your head. So let's talk about what we can do here. It's gonna go ahead and we'll upload this from my computer. Lab report. All right, I talked before about no prompts or one word prompts. And so in this case, how about we just do, using some words, I'm asking to do a, to please analyze and provide a high level summary because the last time I asked it to summarize at a lower level, it got really detailed. So we're just keeping it high level for this video here. Um, but I mean, you can ask the GPT any question, right? And so. It's giving me a, well, 
a little more detail than I wanted. But at the end, I can just ask it. I've just stopped it. <clears throat> what should I be concerned about if this is me? Notable increase in liver enzymes. So I, um, I actually had ChatGPT create this report for me, and I told it to pump up the <laughs> some of the liver lab results um, for someone in liver failure. Um, not something to laugh about for anybody, of course, that's in liver, liver failure, but this um, this is the report uh, that it created for me. And as you can see, it's recognized it by analyzing the report. Uh, just one example of how ChatGPT can help you just look at complex information that matters to you uh, and give you meaningful information. Uh, I could ask it questions about my previous results, my newest results, uh, you know, what's increased, what's decreased, where are the dangers, as I've asked here. Anyways, you get the idea. Um, explain this thing for me, and ChatGPT is there for you. All right, what's the last thing? So a little levity here. So Cameron Henneke, he is the founder and CEO at GQs, which is the uh, foundational core of my task management system. I use it multiple times a day. In any event, he posted this joke on LinkedIn, and it says GitHub Copilot before and after. And you can see the tab key uh, on his computer is wore out. Um, and let's pretend, let's say hypothetically, you don't get the joke. It wasn't me, I promise. And you're like, okay, well, what is it? This, this is clearly a joke. What does this mean? Uh, so again, just send it to chat GPT. I'm going to upload this from my computer this time. Explain this joke. <laughs> I don't get it. And let's see what chat GPT comes up with. So, the image is a humorous take on the impact of a GitHub Copilot on a programmer's keyboard usage. GitHub Copilot is an AI-powered code completion. Bottom line is he just kept hitting the tab button because it's giving him all the right answers and doesn't even have to, uh, yeah, the tab button's getting him where he needs to be. All right, hopefully one of these landed, maybe all of them did, and now you're like, wow, ChatGPT has come a long way. This is the free version, I'm in, let's get some work done. Because um, that was the goal. Let me jump back into uh, where we left off, which was right here, and answering the question, why should you care? Why should you care? Why should you start using these new features? <laughs> Each new model leapfrogs the last one in usefulness. Those of us not learning with them as they leap forward, are going to get left behind. Today's goal was to spark one idea about how you can actually use ChatGPT day-to-day -day in the real world with an immediate impact. Why? This technology will soon be ubiquitous. Those of us, through deliberate practice, who, by changing our defaults, have learned to make AI our new default productivity option or choiceless choice, as Joe Byerly would say, we will be the ones producing at the new speed of life. As Ethan Mollick has said, humans that use AI will replace humans that don't. And the only way to get good at AI is by using AI. So always invite AI to the table. All right. Thanks for watching. If any of these ideas you were like, yeah, man, I'm going to try that out. Please let me know. Love to hear this feedback from you. Um, and if you got any questions, of course, we're going to get into that. Don't forget, link goodness in the description down below. Tons of videos that covered stuff that I skipped in here. Check those out. Links to the products that I shared with you. All that link goodness description down below. Please like, subscribe, share this with somebody that would find it useful. If you're using ChatGPT and they're not, help them understand why it's helpful. As always, as you, <laughs> if you leave questions, I will leave answers. Now go and be productive.